Good morning. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Tuesday morning, November the 8th, 2022, to Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church, Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America, and LCMS Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod Congregation. And again, I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation. So good to be able to welcome you this morning, uh, November the 8th, worldwide, no matter where you're chiming in from, to this particular piece of daily devotional ministry. Today is election day, midterm election day here in the United States. So it's a very big day here, uh, very important uh, on these elections uh, today because it will have hopefully a dramatic effect for the good uh, on trying to turn this country around. Uh, so we'll have to see, <laughs> you know, with the political arena. But uh, today is election day. So, um, but this morning, my brothers and sisters, we're going to, we're not going to talk about the election, you know, <laughs> or politics. We're going to talk about VDMA. V is in Victor, D is in dog, M is in Mary, A is in apple. Those initials. And so what are they? And are they important at all? <laughs> so we're going to take a look at that this morning a little bit as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so the psalm, I want to share with you a psalm this morning. And it's Psalm 78. And it deals with the Word of God. And uh, the psalmist talks about its importance. So I pray that this will bless you, and then I'm going to pray this psalm as Martin Luther does, and pray that will bless you as well. So Psalm 78 says this, Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my youth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. See, we are not to keep the gospel or the things of God to our own self. We need to share it with people every day as we come in contact, in normal conversation. That's what it's intended to be, all right? So he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children. And this is not happening today. Fathers are not teaching their children the Christian faith. And now we're seeing the results of that. People don't go to church. They come up with all kinds of excuses not to do so. They don't live out the Christian life. They don't take serious their spiritual life. Uh, they, they conjure up these opinions like, the Bible and Jesus is not relevant, most certainly is, but they've never read the Bible, so how would they know? You know, but, but it's because parents aren't doing their job. They're not teaching their children. And so Jesus said, you're going to reap what you sow. So anyway, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children. You see, when we don't do that, we're raising up a generation that is completely ignorant to God, and that's what we've got. Majority of people don't have a clue what the Bible says. And a lot of them don't really care. So, um, it, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And that they should not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. But that's exactly what we have. A generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimites, armed with the bow, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant, but refused to walk according to his law, which is where we are today. They forgot his works and the wonders that he had shown them. In the sight of their fathers, he performed wonders in the land of Egypt and the fields of Zone. He divided the sea and let them pass through it and made the water stands like a heap in the Red Sea. They forgot all that. In the daytime, he led them with a cloud, and all night with a fiery light. He split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink abundantly as from the deep. He made streams come out of the rock and caused waters to flow down like rivers. Yet they sinned still more against him. 
rebelling against the Most High in the desert. They tested God in their heart, which is what, what what's happening today. Nothing new. By demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, can God spread a table in the wilderness? In other words, they doubt the miraculous of God. People do that today. Um, he struck the rock so that water gushed out and streams overflowed. Can he give bread or provide meat for his people? Most assuredly, but people deny the miraculous of God. They don't believe in the sacramental ministry. No excuses. All right. So therefore, when the Lord heard, he was full of wrath. This does not please God, and it's not pleasing him today in any shape or form. A fire was kindled against Jacob. His anger rose against Israel because they did not believe or trust in God and did not trust his saving power. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven, and he rained down on them manna to eat and gave them grain of heaven. Yet he still shows his grace and mercy. So let me pray this psalm as Martin Luther would pray it. Heavenly dove, spirit divine, please fill our hearts with the love of your word and through it create in us the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Endow all parents with wisdom to rear their children in the fear of God and bless all our Christian schools that these folds for Jesus' lambs may prosper and multiply in our land. A lot of that's going to be contingent upon what happens in the election today. All right? So, thanks be to God, amen? <laughs> so, I'm going to share with you morning prayer this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light, and our life. Oh, come, let us worship him. So the passage of scripture that our devotional is going to unpack for us with regard to these initials, V, V is in Victor, D, M, A, is St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. And Jesus says this. These are Jesus' words. He says, my words will not pass away. So even though we see the world going this way, we see our country going this way, and we, it looks, you know, sometimes bleak, Jesus says, my word will not go away. All right. So how about a little Latin today? VDMA is short for verbum domini manet in internum. And I'm not pronouncing that right. But it means... The word of the Lord endures forever. VDMA. Jesus said it. Luther said it. The confessor said it. I said it, along with every other Lutheran pastor through all the centuries since 1517. The Lutheran reformers adopted this phrase as their motto. The word of the Lord endures forever, and it does. The same idea appears in the battle hymn of the Reformation, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And we sing the word they still shall let remain, nor any thanks have for it. So isn't this comforting? It should be. <clears throat> Here's why. Nothing in this world endures. It will all go away. 
That is, thus passes the glory of the world. Not only the glory, but the world itself will also pass away. Not so with God. In the beginning was the Word, was always there. The Word, the eternal Logos, is Jesus Christ. He's always been there, because he's God. Where the Word is, the preaching of the good news of Christ's atoning death and resurrection, there is Christ himself. This Word comes to us, and Christ comes with it, in the water of holy baptism, in the sermons, in the bread and wine of Holy Communion. That is incredible joy. But see, here's the problem. People don't believe in word and sacrament ministry. We've got Christian denominations that only believe in, they don't believe in the sacramental ministry. So it's word or sacrament. No, it's not. It's word and. They're connected. They're congruent. So you cannot refute the miraculous of God like they do. But they do, and they do it with passion, thinking that they know, but they don't, <laughs> okay? It's a big problem. Um, in the sermon, in the bread and the wine and Holy Communion, what joy? The word endures forever, and we will endure forever with that word, that is, with Christ in our hearts by faith. And that should be a tremendous comfort, okay? It should be, and I pray it is. So allow me to please pray. So, dear Lord Jesus, let us hear you speak words of comfort by your word, and by that selfsame word, endure forever with you. Amen. Thanks be to God, brothers and sisters. <clears throat> so, O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days... He's spoken to us by his son. So blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He's come to his people. He's redeemed them. He's raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of a servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, this morning, November the 8th, the Almighty and Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, I pray that you've had a good morning, and I pray you'll have a good day today. And those of you that are here in the United States, if you haven't voted, please get out there and do that today. It's very important. So I just want to encourage you. Lynn Lawrence, good to see you, my sister from Benson, Arizona, chiming in. And that goes with all of you this morning, worldwide, no matter where it is, 
that you're chiming in from, whether it's here in the United States, in Europe, South America, Central America, uh, Mexico, um, you know, Malaysia, wherever. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for uh, allowing this piece of minister, ministry to be an intentional part of your day. So I pray you've been blessed, inspired, encouraged, and also having genuine, real peace. Beautiful day here in southern Arizona. Clear sky, sunny. Just a wonderful day to be here in southern Arizona in the desert. So the flaps have been retracted and so has the gear. And I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies.